Pretty Kitty, this is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing and today's video is a tutorial. I promised you guys that in my way of saying thanks to you for subscribing, um, I would do a sew along tutorial and I've chosen the City Gym Shorts pattern from Pearl Soho. Excuse the dog, she just wants to walk backwards and forwards through the kitchen so you're going to hear a lot of clippity cloppity. Um, so yeah, I've chosen the City Gym Shorts from Pearl Soho to do a sew along for you guys. This is a really good beginner make. Um, it uses bias binding and an elasticated waistband and you can make women's shorts or you can make children's shorts with them. And in the video I'm making a children's pair but you can easily transfer the entire tutorial to a pair for yourself. Um, so I'm excited for you to watch it. I hope you enjoy and you um, choose to sew along and I'll come back at the end of the video um, with a few more bits and pieces of info. Thanks very much. Okay, these are the Pearl Soho City Gym Shorts and I'm going to show you how to make a children's pair today because I wanted to make you a ladies pair and I couldn't find any nice bias binding in my stash and didn't want to have to wait to go shopping but the process is absolutely the same um, whether you're making big ones or small ones so this is our pattern here it's a free downloadable PDF from the website it's quite straightforward when you print out make sure you print it actual size so it's the right size for your uh, pattern pieces and then you need to stick them all together and it, you, you can see it's really quite straightforward it tells you where to attach these pieces so you've got three front and three back pieces there's also a waistband piece but I prefer to draft mine and I'll show you how to do that later on because um, I found that the measurements on the website were slightly too long. I also like to trace patterns off and keep them and I thought I would share with you this lovely fabric that I get from Fabricland which is perforated and I can't remember for the life of me what it's called but it's about 80p a metre and it's really see-through. So I'll just show you with this here, move this out of the way. Um, it's super see-through and easy to trace a pattern and nice and tough and durable. And if you plan on making more than one pair of something like these shorts, which I do, because I've got three kids and I like the shorts for me as well, it's nice to make something nice and sturdy that you can keep for a long time. So you will need, oh these are my Ikea bags as well, I like to keep my PDF patterns inside see-through Ziploc bags and then they are much much easier to see, you can tell what you've got and what you haven't got and I put a little sticker on the front which tells me what's inside. So today you're going to need your front and back pattern pieces. You're going to need either pattern weights, a rotary cutter and a cutting board or pins and scissors. You will need some fabric. Well, this pattern is actually designed for woven fabrics, but I have made um, these shorts out of jersey before and they work just as well. But we're going to stick with woven today so it's quite easy to start with. This is a spangly cotton with unicorns on. And then you're going to need um, bias binding and this is shop bought bias binding because I'm too lazy to make my own but they do tell you how to make your own bias binding on the Pearl Soho website and what I've done here is I've just taken it to the ironing board if you can see bias binding the two edges are folded into the middle if you then fold it again this way and then iron it all the way along the length it's nice and ready for attaching to your edges Okay, I'm going to go and iron my fabric and lay my pattern pieces out. So you can see that I don't have a full piece of fabric here. This is a um, piece of fabric out of my stash which I use to make pencil cases I think out of and I've got I think just about enough to squeak out this pair of shorts so we're going to have a look and see. Um, you might have noticed that these shorts don't have grain lines on them. So normally with fabric, you will want to be lining up the grain line on your pattern piece with the selvage of the fabric. And this is the selvage over here. So um, usually, typically where you can see 
writing um, or usually just like a white perforated edge and that's the edge of the roll either side so as it comes off the roll it's coming off this way and um, you would normally line up your grain line with your selvage to make sure that your pattern pieces are straight so I um, am going to use this line in the centre of the short pieces just to make sure that I get them as straight as possible on the um, fabric. So I'm just going to use a ruler, hope you can see this, and measure. So that's about 12 centimetres there and about 12 centimetres there. So that piece is pretty straight already. And because I'm sort of tetrising it out of... Uh, fabric that's all cut to pieces I'm just going to make sure that I don't have any mix there now I'm just about right and then I'm going to do the same with this one slide onto the fabric and measure across so it's about 29 so that needs to go that way just a tiny bit So this is generally more important, um, you end up with twisted fabric and things when you're making garments, so pop your pattern pieces down like this. And I have had a little practice and I do think that there is just about enough to get my other pieces, so I'm obviously going to have to flip them. Um, if you had a normal sized piece of fabric and you could fold the two selvages together, you could cut them out double. So you would just lay them down like this and cut two pieces out at once. You want one um, in this orientation and then flip it over so that you've got two sides of your shorts. I'm going to go ahead and use my rotary cutter to cut out my pattern pieces. And I honestly don't know what I did before I had a rotary cutter, to be honest. So much quicker and easier, especially if you've got a nice big cutting board like this one. You can properly cut out lots of different things, have loads of room. So I'm just going to cut one of these pieces out to show you. And then I will come back to you when my pattern pieces are flipped over and on the other side of the fabric. There we go. Now there's no markings on these. Some patterns have notches and markings, but these are basic pattern pieces and there are no notches to worry about. So there we have one piece of short. And then the next thing I'm gonna do after I've cut that piece out is then flip them both over so that I get the opposite side over here. Okay, so here we are with the pattern pieces flipped over. Um, and this time round, what I've had to do is because there's no salvage on this side of the fabric, I have folded the pattern piece in half, just found a couple of points where the pattern repeat, I can sort of uh, pick out a couple of features in the pattern repeat that I can line it up. And in this case, it was the bottom of the unicorn's um, feet. Uh, I could find a sort of line on the fabric so I laid it straight on there so then I'm going to cut these pieces out and I'll come back to you and I have got my four pieces of shorts okay here are my four pieces two fronts two backs and now what I need to do is to lay them right sides together and then sew along this seam here which is the crotch seam and the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch on this pattern, which just so happens to be the same as if you use an overlocker and you run your overlocker foot down the edge. Um, don't worry though, if you haven't got an overlocker, you don't have to use an overlocker. You can just use your sewing machine. I like to use my overlocker because it's quicker and um, I will be using my sewing machine to sew the bias binding on, but um, it finishes the raw edges really neatly. So if you do have a sewing machine, all you need to do now is to set your sewing machine to a straight stitch. Um, it's probably got a preset length of about 
2.4, 2.6 maybe, and then put some pins in or clips down along this edge and then run a line of stitching one quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. So I've pinned the crotch curve and I'm going to just pop that under my overlocker. Like I said, don't worry if you haven't got one, just sew with an ordinary straight stitch and then zigzag finish the raw edge. So that's one done. Just going to grab my scissors so I can snip that off and do the front pieces. You get to let the pins out as you go. I think that was easy enough to see. So what's happened here is I have overlocked, oh this is tricky, overlocked that edge there so that when we open it out we have what looks like the front of a pair of shorts and the back of a pair of shorts. Okay, the next step, once you've sewn the two parts together, is to find the crotch. And then with right sides together, we're going to pin this along here. And we're also going to match up the centre seam. And the best way to reduce bulk in that area is to push one seam one way and one seam the other. So I normally start right in the middle and stick a pin in there like that and then pin the rest of the crotch in place like that and like that okay so that's all pinned up nicely and we're going to do the same thing again a quarter inch seam allowance either on the sewing machine with a zigzag edge to neaten the raw edges or on the overlocker. So there we go. So I've popped one seam one way and one seam the other way. That's to reduce bulk, bulk in the crotch area. And now we have what's looking much more like a pair of shorts. But uh, the next thing we need to do is bias bind the edge all the way around both sides of these shorts. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Right, I hope it's bright enough for you guys. I'm filming this whilst the kids are in bed with a big bright light, so please forgive me if, it, if you're having difficulty seeing. I hope it's bright enough. Um, I've got the shorts laid out in front of me now with the crotch seam in the middle, and I've given them a little bit of a press. We're now going to bias bind this edge here, which runs all the way from the back of the shorts to the front of the shorts. So, with your bias binding, um, I'm just going to first of all measure to make sure I've got enough of this bias binding because I um, would hate to have to run out halfway through. Let's give it a little whip around the edge and just see. So there's enough for that piece. And you could use a flexible ruler for this, but this is just a crude guess just to make sure yeah I just got plenty there 
so we've ironed this bias binding in half on the ironing board so we have got a fold like this and then all we're going to do is literally just sandwich this edge here into that fold so hold it open I usually give it a tiny little bit of extra at the top just to help me and then you're going to sandwich the edge of the fabric right up to the crease and then pop a pin or a clip whichever you prefer into the bias binding in the fabric so that it doesn't slip off as you say so fit the fabric inside the bias binding like that and then pin it and so we're going to carry on doing that the corners can be a little bit tricky especially with this shop bought bias binding because it's a little bit stiffer but I'll show you when we get there how to ease it around the edge so as you get to the curve I tend to use more pins make sure you're still trapping that fabric right up close to the crease in the middle and then just turn the bias binding it's a bit fiddly just get it in there and then twist the bias binding round keep popping lots of pins as you go and I'll come back to you when I have been right the way around the edge of my shorts and show you what that looks like Okay, so now you can see that I have um, pinned all the bias binding around the edges of both the front and the back of the shorts, like this. And this is your crotch seam in the middle. So what we're going to do now is take our um, shorts over to the sewing machine. We are going to run a running stitch all the way down this edge here. So we catch the front and the back of this bias binding. Um, I will try and phone, use my phone to film uh, the positioning of the needle on the sewing machine and bits like that, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to really accurately um, video myself sewing. It's a bit getting a bit dark tonight, so um, I will just show you where I place the foot on the sewing machine so we can get started on that. Right, here we are at the sewing machine. I just so happen to have my walking foot still on from um, a previous project, but uh, that won't make any difference to you guys. What you need to do is put your foot on top of the bias binding. My sewing machine has the function to move the needle from the middle to the left. It just makes it easier for me lining up, but get a point of reference on the foot where you can follow so I'm going by this straight line on the top here lining up with the edge of the bias binding and that's given me a nice straight stitch probably only a tiny tiny bit from the edge you want it far enough in that it's going to catch the bottom but not so far in that this bit flaps around so um, have a little practice on a scrap of fabric first to see how you get on but I'm gonna run a line of stitches all the way around this edge of this shorts um, and I'll um, come back to you when I've done that okay so here we are I have just finished pressing my bias binding um, especially that's important around the corners to get it to lie nice and flat um, as you can see there there's a tiny wrinkle there but ironing them out really nicely helps with the bias binding especially if it's a bit stiff um, and if I show you here, uh, nice neat, I hope you can see that, nice neat li line of stitching, I'm sorry if you, that's not quite um, visible. Um, so yeah, we now have one pair of shorts that's kind of in two halves and needs to be made into uh, one. So you are going to lay the front piece of shorts over the back and the way to find out which is which is to look for the 
smaller of the two, okay? So the smaller piece is the front and the bigger piece is the back. And then what we're gonna do now is just fold this edge over here with this bias binding and take this edge here and line the top up and find the where your stitching is here, find the middle of the bias binding behind because what you're going to do essentially is run another line of stitching all the way down this stitch line here in the middle of the bias binding behind. So the way I do this is to pop a pin through the stitch line because you want it to look nice and neat so that you can't see any different stitching. So I pop a pin through and then I just have a check behind and that's kind of nice and central in the middle of that bias binding behind. So again, I'm going to line that up, pop a pin in there, and then do the same down here, all the way down so you're just above the curve here. So just at the part where they start to go in their different ways. I'm just gonna pop a pin in there as well. And then if you look from behind, you can see that I've got it nice and central to the bias binding that's there. So when I run my line of stitches down the same line here, I'm gonna catch that bias binding behind right in the middle. So I will just pin the other side the same. So this is the front that's gonna go over the top of the back piece. And I'm just going to line the two tops of the fabric up and pop it in the middle. Like that, all the way down. Point there where it starts to deviate and go around in the bend and then just check from behind so that you haven't gone off center slightly so now you can start to see these shorts are really coming together and what we need to do now is to take this over to the sewing machine and then just run another line of stitching down this line where the bias binding is fixed to the fabric. Okay, we'll come back when that's been done. So hopefully you can see this a bit clearer here. I've got one overlapping the other. This is my line of stitches that held my bias binding on that we just did. And I'm gonna run a second line of stitches over the top of these stitches, right the way down to the bottom to where the last pin is here where the fabric starts to go in two different directions. Yay! We have now got something that looks actually like a pair of shorts that's all attached together and I will show you if you can see here and I'm sorry if you can't because it is getting quite late now and the light's fading um, that I have run another line of stitching all the way down that stitching that was holding the bias binding on so you cannot see um, how that's attached on there and that really gives it a very neat finish. So um, the next thing to do is to place the waistband with the elastic on and then we're nearly finished. So I found with this pattern the length of the waistband that they suggest is actually a tiny bit too long and I'm not really sure why that is but what I like to do is work out how um, big a waistband to make and then just pop one on, draft it myself. So I'll just show you how to do that with a tape measure. Okay, so all I'm literally gonna do is measure the waistband of these shorts. So, go all the way around. this back to the other side so we're looking at 26 
And then I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance again. So I'm going to use my overlocker to sew the bits together. So I'm going to add those two quarter inches on that are going to be um, my seam allowance. So I'm going to cut a waistband that's 26 and a half inches and we should be good to go. Okay, I'll show you how to do that with my quilting ruler. So I'm hoping I've got enough of this unicorn fabric left because it was a scrap. I think there was a longish piece here. So I'm kind of hoping I might be out of luck. I might have to do a contrast waistband, which is no big deal, or join it. So let's have a look and see. Mm -mm -mm. 26 and a half I said didn't I so perfect I'm going to go and iron this piece of fabric and then I'll get my quilting ruler out and draft the waistband okay so this is my quilting ruler I hope it's not reflecting too badly it's a Janome one um, and it's quite a big quilting ruler and I like it because the markings on here are really clear so you can get a nice straight edge so what I've done is the Pearl Soho website advises the waistband to be four and three quarter inches wide and then I have obviously measured um, 26 and a half inches long for that so I'm going to use my rotary cutter again just to chop this all the way down so and sadly my ruler doesn't go quite to 26 and a half but once I've got those straight edges um, I can move on move my ruler up so that's 24 25 26 and a half make sure it's straight again and I'll just turn that I don't know if you can see what I'm doing at the end there. So I've made sure that my, so along here I've got inches and uh, this is four and three quarters. So I'm making sure that this line is equal with the line of my fabric all the way along. And I've measured to 26 and a half inches that way. So I'm just gonna cut this, excuse me if my head comes into shot. got a really nice straight waistband so the next thing we're going to do according to the instructions on the website is press this waistband a bit like a piece of bias binding so first of all all the way along halfway to make a crease and then once there's a crease in the middle we're going to then fold these bits in like this either side and then crease it again to encase the elastic. When we fold it this way, like bias binding, that will be the width of our waistband. So I'm just gonna pop off to the iron and do that. So again, we're gonna fold in half that way and then fold it back out so that we've got a crease down the center line of this waistband and then fold either side in towards that crease, just like bias binding. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna go and do that now. So now I've got this giant piece of bias binding here, as you can see, what we're going to do is unfold the ends, the two short ends of the bias binding and place it right sides together, like this, and we are going to pin and then I'm going to overlock down that edge. I was just thinking about my maths when it came to the waistband. Maths was never my strongest point. I think I only needed to make 26 and a quarter inch rather than a half inch, but there's nothing worse than a waistband that's too short. So I'm going to just do this with a quarter inch seam allowance and then try it against the shorts and see how the fit is it's probably better that it's a tiny bit too big rather than too small because we can't do much about that so I'm just going to pop that on the overlocker like I said you just do that on the sewing machine exactly the same way using the same seam allowance 
I love my overlocker. So quick. And what I generally tend to do is just make the tail really long and then you can either grab a blunt needle and feed that back through or because we're going to be attaching this to the shorts and then sewing all the way around and, and encasing those raw ends we can just go ahead and chop those off. Okay come back when we've decided where we're going to put this on our shorts. Okay, I hope you can't hear the dog snoring in the background. It's literally that late now. The dog is fast asleep on the sofa. So we've done what we've done now is turn the shorts inside out. I've got my giant piece of bias binding waistband. I'm going to fold it out so you can see we've got the crease in the middle and then two creases either side. What we're going to do is line up this um, seam here with the seam, I'm going to go for the seam at the back because um, I think that will be neater. So I'm just going to turn that round because that's the back of the shorts. And I'm just going to line up those two seams there and pop a pin in. Now one thing that's worth checking with this stage is to make sure that if you've got a really obvious directional print, you have got your waistband the right way round. So just go ahead and fold it round how it's going to be when it's finished and make sure that your um, motif is the right way up because I have done that and accidentally put it on upside down so I had flamingos upside down but you can see there that the unicorn is the right way up. This print isn't too bad because it's the unicorns are all over the place. So what we're going to do now just hope that my maths worked out and that this waistband is going to fit. I'm just going to unfold that to fold all the way around the shorts and go ahead and pin it into position. It's looking good, I think it's going to be okay. Might be a tiny bit, a fraction too big, but I think we can work with that. So, yeah, go right the way around the shorts with pins, pinning your waistband to your shorts. And we'll come back when I've done that. Okay, so my waistband is pinned on all the way around. It probably is a quarter of an inch too long for the shorts, but it's good because these shorts have got a little bit of stretch in them. So I've eased it all the way around and I am going to now... The reason for that is I had forgotten that I'm only sewing one... Um, one seam, when I've made these previously, I've had to sew two pieces of fabric together to make one continuous length for the waistband. So in that on that occasion, I had to take both seam allowances away. But because this was just one long piece of um, fabric that I then sewed together, um, I only needed to take one quarter inch seam allowance off, if that makes sense to you. But um, yeah, clear as mud, eh? I'm just going to take this over to the sewing machine now and we are going to sew along this crease here all the way around the shorts. Okay. Here we are at the sewing machine with a snoring dog in the background still. I'm going to sew all the way along this crease here right the way around the top of the shorts. Um, just wanted to show you more of a close up so that you could see just in case the light's not so good over at the table. Okay. Okay, here we are. I've sewn my waistband right the way around in that ditch, if you can see. Don't know if you can or not, but there's definitely stitches there. There we go, all the way around the shorts. And so the next step is to now fold this back up and over the top. So what I'm gonna do first is just pop this to the ironing board and then just iron this crease upwards so we definitely make sure that that is really, really lovely and pressed. Um, it's really important to stop and press as you go along. Uh, you'll get a much nicer finished garment if you do some pressing as you go. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and press this seam upwards and then I shall come back and we'll fold this waistband back over the top here and 
the next step. Okay, so now we've ironed these shorts, the waistband up, I'm gonna turn them the right way out. And the next step is to fold this waistband, just cut some of those threads off, the overlocker threads are in the way there. So maintaining that fold in the middle, fold this down and over the stitching underneath. So we'll pop some pins in as we go. So just fold it down so that it covers. I have to admit, this was an unusual way of doing a waistband for me. I think it must just be the style of these shorts that dictates it, but um, I would normally be folding waistbands to the inside of garments because you don't want to see the stitching, but this um, is going to be top stitched all the way round, so it's really important that you just make sure that you cover the line of stitching underneath just ever so slightly so that you're not going to see it when you top stitch the waistband down and um, if it doesn't quite fit you can always press it again to recreate this crease up here. Okay so we pinned all the way around and what we're going to do is we're going to leave a little gap um, to feed the elastic in of about an inch and I try and do that at the back of the shorts so you can still tell which is the front and which is the back by looking at the bias binding. The front is overlapping the back so the back is over here and to remind me I normally stick a pin in this way around so that I know when I get to my sewing machine that I'm going to leave an inch there just to feed the elastic into. So I hope that you guys can see that. It's all folded down nicely. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I am going to stitch all the way around quite close to the edge here um, so that I can cover up the stitch line underneath. And I'll come back when I've done that. Here we are at the sewing machine ready to stitch this waistband down and if you can see here I'm running a line of stitches, excuse my nails, I'm never going to have nice nails, um, run a line of stitches really close to this edge here, making sure to cover this previous line of stitching from when we sewed the waistband on. So I'm going to go all the way around the shorts, leaving a one inch gap at the back here. And I've just taken my red pin out so that I, I know where to leave the gap. Okay. Okay, so here they are. Waistband is all stitched on nice and neatly with none of the underneath stitches showing. And I've left a small opening at the back here for feeding my elastic in. Um, you need one inch elastic so um, that will fit in that channel there really nicely. I only happen to have black in my stash at the moment but um, I would usually put white in. I don't think this is going to show through here though so we'll be okay. So I'm just going to use a safety pin. I have got an elastic threading device but I find it easier to use a good old fashioned safety pin. And you just put your safety pin in the end of the elastic and then feed it all the way around the shorts in this channel. And I'll come back when I have done that because that's going to be boring watching me feed elastic through those shorts. Hang on one sec. Right, the dog really is snoring now, it's half past ten, and I do hope you can see what I'm doing here. I have got a big light on top of the table, so hopefully it's not too difficult to see. But I have threaded my elastic all the way through that waistband now. Just be careful not to make it twisted. Um, it's quite good this one because the elastic fills the entire channel up, so it shouldn't have too much room to twist. But what you need to do now is decide how long the elastic has to be and I need to do that by trying them on my daughter tomorrow morning. So I'm just going to leave the safety pin for now but when I've decided how long that elastic should be I will overlock the two edges together and pop them back inside that channel and stitch <laughs> my dog, Ruby, um, stitch all the way along and close that gap up and then what I do like to do once I've reorganized the elastic and distributed it evenly around the shorts is just to pop a little stitch line down either side 
um, to stop the elastic twisting because there's nothing worse than a garment with the elastic twisting round and round inside the casing. But so we... thanks for watching that, I hope you enjoyed it. These are the finished shorts here. Um, lovely, cute summer make for my middle daughter who is really excited to wear these. Uh, they finish nicely. I still have to sew the little gap shut, but I have the elastic at the right length now, so that's a job for this afternoon. Um, yeah, so I hope you really enjoyed sewing along with me. Um, if you did, please make um, a pair and tag me on Instagram. Use the hashtag, and I need to read this out, City Gym Shorts Sew Along. So I will pop that down here somewhere so you can see it. Uh, if you use that hashtag, I'll be able to see all your lovely creations and that will make me super happy. So um, thanks. And if you like my video, please press the thumbs up or press the subscribe button to catch up with my next video. I'm going to be talking about this make, which is the Sew Over at London Silk Cami and also a new purchase, which happens to be a sewing book. Uh, that doesn't count. I'm on a fabric band band, but books does not count. So I will catch you next time for that one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.